Welcome to Joburg Today, I'm Leroy Viaggi. And I'm Zizi Ndebu. Going green is about the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And we speak to Ria and Tato about how they are upholding the three R's in their business. On Joburg Today, we are joined by Ria from Ritaka. Welcome to Joburg Today. Hello Zizi, how are you? Fine, thanks in yourself. Good, good. So you bought a very interesting bag yes. that I've heard tons about. Yes. But tell us a bit about this bag and how the business actually started in producing these bags. Well, what you have in your lab is the repurposed school bag. And what it is is that it's a, companion, it's a child's companion to attaining an education. And how it came about is that it was my business partner's school assignment where she had to use something from nature um, to create something that's purposeful. And she then took plastic and created a bag out of it. We then took the bag and we realized that, you know what, we could use this for numerous things um, in our community. And that's how the bag was birthed. There's a social development aspect when it comes to these bags and assisting children. Tell us a bit about that. So the bag pretty much has taken societal problems that these kids face, um, that hinders their, their progression and their journey to attaining education. So what we realize is that not only do we have environmental issues, but these kids use plastics as a means to carry their school bags, their school books. And um, when they get back home, they also don't have a light source to study with. So they use your candles and kerosene and paraffin lanterns, which cause shack fires and are hazardous to their health. And another thing is that they're not very safe on the roads due to non-visibility. So we used all of these societal problems and we implemented in th into the bag to make it um, a solution for them. Fantastic. So you mentioned a lot of factors, lighting, carrying books and safety for the evening. So tell us just about all the parts that you spoke of earlier on um, and how you put all of these parts together to make this bag. So. As you see here, um, the bag is made out of 100% recycled plastic. Okay. So we source it from different sources, from landfills, from schools, from corporates, from households. And they come back to our factory and they're made into the bag. And then on the bag, we've integrated a retroreflective material on both sides. Okay. So that when the kids walk in the mornings at 5 a.m. or come back from school at around 6 p.m., when... Um, car headlights hit the bag, they're able to be more visible on the road. Very smart. And then um, we've also integrated a solar panel that we've partnered with Console on, where um, as they're walking to and from school, the sunlight um, charges the solar panel. And when they get back home, instead of using your candles, they're able to use it as a light source, um, which lasts up to 12 hours if they charge it for five to six. Wow. And you said that these bags, of course, they help the children out. But who else are your clients when it comes to these bags? We've actually targeted the purchasing of the school bags to corporates. So um, they use their CSI or their market, their CSI or their marketing spend um, as a means to purchase the bags, either for schools that they're currently working with or for schools that they'd like to approach. And then we as an organization, we either partner up, we partner them up with the schools or um, they tell us that they've got a school and they purchase the bags and then we have a ceremony and then we hand them over. This is all very inspiring. So where do you want to see this business in two or five years from now? We want to see our bags everywhere. So currently what we're working towards is to expand into Africa and to also be operational in all of South Africa and then take it to other third world countries that are facing the same societal problems as kids in our country. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. This is Yolanda and you're watching Joe Back Today. Join the conversation on our Facebook page, that's joburgtoday.tv. And on Twitter at joburgtoday. And if you're one of those people on the move, then pockettv.mobi. That's pocket with an I. Now what happens when you give a child of the city of Johannesburg a camera to play with? That's the story of I was shot in Joburg. It started off basically as a very small project. Um, I did it with a group of, of boys who used to live with uh, Twilight Children, a shelter for former street children in Hillbrow. Um, I gave them disposable cameras and we had a class every week um, to either take photographs of the immediate environment or discuss the photographs. And as the images started coming back from the lab, we were all extremely excited. I mean, 
They were naive yet very real. The first time where I like, I hold my disposable camera. So like in my mind is, there were thoughts going like, okay, now I'm handling a camera, like I'm supposed to do like some productive work. But at the first time I was like intimidating this project. But when time went on, I met some other guys. Then we started t taking some few pics while we were walking. Then I learned more, like there's more to, to a, an actual photo that we take. There's a story behind it. I got involved with this company um, in the beginning of 2009, which is four and a half years ago. And uh, what happened, like, uh, there's a guy, Bernard Fulion, the founder of the company. Uh, he came to the shelter and asked if you are interested in learning how to photography. Um, I was one of the first group that we were taken through uh, the, the photography uh, course that, that took us about six months. And after that, we had to exhibit our work that we have been doing all the way through. They are actually our first exhibition that we had in 2009. And uh, some of them are mine, and there are some that I really like. Some are like, this one, that's my hand. People like the concept and even bought some of our canvases. And uh, after that, we decided we need to grow the project and make it as a business so that we can uh, make income out of it. Basically, uh, when I came with the cameras, started going around, it was like on the Mondays, we called it on the Mondays afternoon. Most of the pictures, if you might look there, are from the CBD and uh, um, Hillbro, and actually they explain life in Joburg. So yeah, it's all about like life, the street life of Joburg, how people live, and actually our everyday life in Joburg. I'm Samantha Jessamine and you're watching Joburg Today. One of my New Year's resolutions is to decrease my carbon footprint. And Ella from Generation Earth comes in with some tips on how to go about it. On Joburg Today, we are joined by Ella Bella from Generation Earth. Ella, welcome to Joburg Today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. A pleasure. <laughs> so for those who don't know, what is Generation Earth about? Generation Earth is really aimed at getting young people involved in environmental issues, problems and solutions. It's about career guidance, getting them in touch with what is happening in a local level and a global level. You know, we hear these terms about, you know, climate change and sustainability, but me as one individual, how do I make a change? How do I contribute to the solutions that are being talked, spoken about rather, um, you know, on a, a global setting? What are some of the projects that Generation Earth has developed to engage the youth in actual climate change issues? Sure. Every year we have a different summit, um, a summit that is themed around one specific topic. So this year being our 20 year anniversary wow. of democracy, Fantastic. we said we had to highlight it because so many of our young students at high school are born freeze. Uh, so we had to highlight that and celebrate that and see as born freeze, how do we plan the next 20 years for people and for planet? Um, how do we take on that responsibility and make better decisions that have been made in the last 20 years? So we had this wonderful dialogue um, around uh, simple acts of celebration and then you know forward planning. Uh, we've also held uh, certain dialogues on um, agriculture, food security. It's important living in the city because you know we think farms are out there somewhere um, you know beyond the buildings yes. but you know we can actually do so much of our own subsistence farming. We've got cleanups that happen as well, um, river cleanups, beach cleanups, depends on where your school is situated um, but you know here being in the city uh, Josie, you know, we've got to be able to clean our waterways, our streets. Um, litter is a huge problem. The project itself, or the movement itself, is very youth-centric. What is the reasoning behind that? You know, if anybody asked me before I started Generation Earth, you know, do you realize you're working a lot with teenagers? <laughs> I think I might have stopped and said, wait a minute. <laughs> but can I tell you, I have been so pleasantly surprised at the energy from young people. The energy from, you know, the schools. We started in Johannesburg originally, and then we kind of branched out. But 
visiting the different schools in Johannesburg, hearing about their aspirations and their goals and dreams, um, you know, inspires me as, as a young person or a little bit older than them. But, you know, it's so great to see how that the youth are so mis, mis you know, interpreted mm. by everybody else because they really do want to be involved. I know I'm doing the right thing. Working as an activist in the environmental side, I know that we're doing something good because it'll be carried for generations to come. Yeah. If that's the energy of the next generation, we're going to be fine. How's it? My name is Matt Moore, and you're watching <laughs> Joe Berg Today. For more stories on the city, check out our special focus section. And if you want to find out what's happening in and around Johannesburg, check out Joburg In Your Pocket. That's it from me, ZZ Paul. And me, Leroy. We leave you with Rubber Duck, Screw Loose. Back in ETV. I got Screw Loose in my shoe. I got screw loose just for you. I got a screw loose for Cape Town. And when you find me on the street, with screw loose in my feet, you know Cape Town's my playground. My playground. I got screw loose in my head. Ten shots, knock knock, who's there? On the rocks we roll through Cape Town And I say sweet, so sad to crime So drink whiskey mixed with lime All this time we fight for one more night We fight, please don't take this so feet From this street, please save my soul For this will be in my shoe And please don't stop it I won't stop until my heart stop loving you I got screw loose in my shoe I got screw loose just for you And know how the city waits for the showdown Between the hill and the floor Between the zap folk and the door All this time we fight for one more night We fight, please don't take from this street, please save my soul. Put the screw back in my shoe. And please don't stop it. I won't stop until my heart stops loving you. I got a screw loose in my shoe I got a screw loose just for you I got a screw loose for Cape Town And please don't take these off feet From this street, please save my soul Put the screw back in my shoe And please don't stop it I won't stop until my heart stops loving you